Hello and welcome to this complete course on Docker and Kubernetes for React developers. My name is Pranjal and I am your course instructor. This course will help you all to understand the fundamental concepts of Docker, Kubernetes and React all together. By the end of this course, you will be capable of creating React application, to containerize your React application, to manage your containers and much more. This course is a proper mix of theoretic concepts and practical hands-on which I will suggest you to follow along with me. Doing any stuff either here or in real world, you need to be experienced how things work, especially in the domain of technology, where without practical knowledge, that piece of knowledge will fade over time. So try to do more hands-on and make your grip over whatever tools you are working on. So are you ready to master Docker, Kubernetes with React and apply them into your project? So let's quickly go through the topics which I'm going to cover in this course. We will start with the basic concepts of Docker like what exactly Docker is, what are Docker containers, what are Docker images and other components of Docker. And also we will understand why you should learn Docker and what are the problems are solved by Docker. Then we will see how Docker works. After it, we're going to run our hello world docker image and run some basic docker commands. After it, we're going to create our own react app, a to-do app basically. Here we will learn about the fundamental concepts which are required in order to develop any react application like components, JXX, props, fragments, state, event handling, form handling, working with list, hooks and much more. Then, we are going to write our custom docker file to create custom docker image and then we are going to push it into docker hub so that anyone around the globe can create docker container from our custom docker image and feel the power of docker that how it solves a classic developer statement that it works on my machine. Docker helps developer like you to build application and deploy anywhere, I mean anywhere. After that, we will learn how to utilize the power of Kubernetes, starting with creating pods, which is the building block of Kubernetes. Then we're going to create replica set, which help us to make our application highly available and fault tolerant. After that, we're going to create deployment object through which we will be able to release our new version of application and roll back if any kind of error occurred in latest update. After it, we will learn how to scale up and scale down application according to the demand for our application. So this is what you are going to learn in this course curriculum. Hope you are going to enjoy this course and learn a lot of things from here. That's all. Keep learning, keep moving ahead and see you in the class. Hey there and welcome back. In this lesson you will learn about what exactly Docker is, what Docker containers are, what Docker images are and at last what are the benefits we are getting from Docker? We all know Docker has changed the world from saying it works in my machine to it works everywhere. You might be facing this problem as most of the developer does that whatever they code it works in their machine but not working in their colleague machine. And the fun part here is that everyone got the same configuration. But why it is happening? The reason behind this problem is that everyone has different environment. I mean different version of different libraries, different packages or whatever, but different. As a result, the code which we run successfully in our machine or into our workspace, that code is not showing the same magic in other workplace. To solve this problem, the problem of environment disparity or to resolve the conflict between developer and the ops team or in order to implement a consistent release and testing process, Docker comes into the picture. With Docker, developers like you can package their code and the code dependencies all together into an isolated box or you can say a Docker container and then you can ship that Docker container where you want to run your code. And to build this Docker container, you need to create Docker image. A Docker image consists of some sort of instruction to build Docker container. The Docker images has everything needed to run a containerized application which include code, the config file, environment variables, libraries, 
setter information, and so on, which will help you out to create and run Docker container. In short, let me conclude before ending this lesson that Docker is an open source platform that enables us to build, run, deploy, and manage our containerized application so that whatever we code can be run everywhere. This is the first benefit which you can think of and it is it makes our code more portable, more streamlined and uh, it will be very helpful at the time of continuous integration and continuous deployment and very helpful at the time of DevOps pipeline as well. Then Docker image. It is just like a template that contains the source code of your application, the instruction which will help you out to create Docker container. That instruction is also known as Docker file. And at last, we have Docker container, which is a runnable instance of our Docker image, which helps us to run application anywhere. So learning Docker is very crucial, either you as a developer or as an operator. The knowledge of Docker will never be uh, wasted. So I hope you have understand why you should learn Docker, why the Docker is changing the world and so on things. Hope you learn from this lesson. If you have a, any kind of doubt, you can ask me in the Q&A section. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, and stay motivated. Hi, welcome back friend. Now you are already familiar with what is Docker and before heading to first the actual deployment of Docker images and all other concepts, let us first discuss the various stats that clearly signifies the increasing demand for Docker among the professionals and why you should learn Docker. As you can see here, Docker is most wanted technology in the IT sector and professionals are showing a high interest in Docker over time. These stats are taken from Stack Overflow survey, which is actually a kind of annual developer survey where developers shows their interest, whatever technology they are using or whatever they want to be in future. And here, the next stat here, Docker is chosen as the second most loved platform on the internet. And you can see here that Docker is gaining the popularity and the love over time. And it is above the Kubernetes, AWS, even Mac OS, which simply signifies the growing demand for this Docker technology. Now, here I'm going to present some more graphs and figure which is taken from docker.com over three years. And here in all the figures, I found something interesting, which is that there is always a upward trend is there. Whether we are talking about total number of pulls in the Docker Hub or total installation of Docker Desktop, or whether I'm talking about number of users and the repositories in Docker Hub, all are increasing over time. This simply signifies the demand of Docker, and companies are adopting this technology, the Docker technology, and looking after the Docker professionals. This simply means that Docker is a hot topic in the IT sector. And if you have a skill on Docker, then it will be very helpful for your career path. Either you are building a new career or want to, to switch between the companies. Docker is very crucial technology and it will help you a lot. This is the timeline of technology, the evolution of technologies, where it started from 1950, the first commercial computer. And then there is mainframe computer in 1960s, then there is desktop computer in 1970. There is a difference between the 10 to 20 years between them. But after internet mass adaption, after 2000, the technologies evolution, the period between them, the gap between them is decreased. Like in 2003, AWS launched, then over two years, Intel virtual technology has released then AMD then KVM LXC and Hyper-V these are virtual virtualization technologies were 
introduced in the technology world and virtual machine has a, a great advantage like it gives an isolated environment with the high security but 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 when we compare it with docker like container technology they are somehow lagging behind them like dockers are lightweight they can boot fast as well as they are portable and can easily scale and in upcoming years the darker will be at the peak the demand is increasing and after darker 2015 kubernetes released and then to 2016 windows container released so the time between them is also reduced and this is a huge shift from the 1950s to 2016 the world is changing and they're adopting a new technologies and darker like container technologies are the new one and it's going to be evolved over the time and the best thing is that till now darker is uh, eight year old even it is not have experience of one decade as well and it is growing massively so it will going to be rise and if you have a tech skill on this docker it will be very very helpful okay now let us compare with docker with other containers technology like there is container d windows container rkt and podman among them windows container and podman are having uh, some weightage over container d and rkt but when you compare this docker with other alternatives you will find that they are negligible if you're going to compare with docker docker has a huge popularity and everyone using this docker and i have shown the stats that there is a massive activity in the docker hub as well so now i think that now you don't have a confusion like why should i learn docker i would recommend that you having a skill on docker will be very very helpful for you all the best for the future and see you in the class hey there and welcome back in this lesson we're going to learn that how this docker run command work just like printing hello world program in any of the programming language we're going to use this hello world image so what happened when we written on this command it looked for that particular image in our local registry but when it doesn't get that it just pulled that particular image from the docker hub and executed the container for it so what happened this is a docker client where we written down some kind of commands there then it used with the help of apis it communicated with the docker server or you can say docker daemon then docker daemon started all the process all the container related process right pulling up the docker image then creating the container from that particular image and so on things now I'm going to create another container and you can say it as a interactive batch session okay so what it will going to do here it again search for that Ubuntu image but it didn't get that so it pulled that image from the docker hub and as I said that it is an interactive batch session so we are inside that Ubuntu container and once we are going to exit from this interactive session then this container will automatically will be exited and this is how this interactive session works okay now let me run some of the basic commands and this is the whole structure the file structure of ubuntu container now let us use some of the commands and here i'm going to list the images which are right there in my local registry so check it out you can use this docker images command and here you will get the list of all the images which are there in our local registry now to check the containers which are there just write down docker container space ls okay remove this and yep and here you can see that only one container is running right now that hello world one is, is exited after performing that task now this ubuntu will be going to be exited once we are going to exit from this interactive session let me show you out i have exit from this interactive session let me open the next terminal and then check it out now you can see the containers 
both the container having the same status they are existed with the status zero so this is how the whole scenario look like okay and we're going to learn more about docker related commands let me show you that how many commands are there in the docker just you need to write this docker in your terminal and you will get the bunches of the commands the options commands like build compose config these are very very useful commands and are all are related to the management commands and the command section where we have attach build create and managing the containers debugging the containers process related commands and many many other commands are there we're going to learn each of them now let us focus on that how you can log in into your registry so for it you need to use the docker login command but before it i must log out from this session as i have already logged in into it now let me show you that how this process look like just you need to write docker space login then it will ask for the username write down your docker hub username and the password which is will be not visible okay now it will going to save all your credentials into your config file and the location is also there so this is how you can easily log in into your registry using the command line so hope you are interested in this upcoming lessons see you in the next class Hi and welcome back friend. In this lesson, I will show you that how you can start interactive bash session using docker run command. So simply write down docker run and then you need to provide the name of your container name which is ubuntu bash here. Then write hyphen it which is used together in order to allocate tty for your container processes. Then you need to provide the name of your docker image which is ubuntu latest here and at last bash. Voila, we are now inside this ubuntu container let us check that our container is running or not the current status of our container just simply write down docker container space ls ls simply means list okay and here we find that our container is running right now and it will work till that we exit from that interactive session okay now i think it is the best time to execute this docker exec command which is used to run a command inside the running container and here I'm going to create a simple test file for it you need to provide the name of your container and you need to write down the, the, the command which you want to run inside that container and here we tried to create a test file now let us check that the command which we run from the outside container it worked fine or not and here you can see the test file is created from outside so this is how this docker is a command work welcome back friend in this lesson we will discuss about two important commands one of them is docker version command which is used to render all version related information in easy to read layout as you know that docker architecture supports client server model so we have two sections one for client and other for server and in each section whatever components they have we have the information of version of all of the components like api version go version git version and so on things and another important command is docker info command which is used to gather a wide range of information related to client and server in client section you will get the context which is default here and you can manage a uh, docker sort of cluster kubernetes cluster using that context then we have some plugins there in server section you can get the information related to containers, images, and the server versions, and what kind of st storage driver you are using, the C group drivers, and the plugins which are there inside the server, and the information related to Swarm that the node is active or not, and how many nodes and managers are there. Then, what kind of algorithm is we are using, which is Raft here, and what kind of runtime is you we are using, the version of that runtime and the kernel versions and what are the operating system which we are using the operating system type which is linux here the architecture the number of cpus and the total memories then lots of lot information you will get inside this docker info command so if you want to know that how your docker ecosystem look like and want to gather some of the importance and the crucial information about your docker you can simply use this docker info command to get all of them.
Hello friends, welcome back. Here in this lesson, we're gonna set up an environment for our project, which is to do app. Here we're gonna use a command line interface tool, which is create react app, through which we will be able to create and run react application quickly. And the best part of it is without doing any kind of configuration. You just need to write npx space create dash react dash app and whatever you want to choose name for your project. In our case, to do app is the name of our project and after it when your command is completed just simply go inside your directory your project directory and just write down npm start and it it will going to start your react application here i'm using visual studio code as ide for my project which makes my task much easier and saves a lot of time so here you can see that our react application is up and running now i'm going to remove some of the files from my react project so like you know test cases report wrap ui tools then some svgs and so on so first of all i'm going to remove this content because these contents are not required for this time and uh, let me remove this section as well and here i'm going to use the header tag okay let me check some more things yeah this icons as well i'm gonna remove now just open app.js and use header tag and just write simply hello world okay as for this will be small case so here we have created simple hello world app and now in another lesson we're gonna jump into bootstrap thing till then keep learning keep exploring Hello friends, welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to add Bootstrap into our website. Okay, so this is a simple Hello World app which we have created. And now we're gonna add the Bootstrap and feel the magic of Bootstrap into our website. So first of all, before jumping into Bootstrap, we'll need to create the component. And inside the component folder, we're going to create a JS file form.js, okay? And now here we're going to use fragment fragment is one of the feature of react which allows you to wrap multiple elements without adding an extra node into your dome okay so I'm using the fragment here instead of using fragment you can simply add a root dome but that makes ridiculous okay so you need to use fragment and now this is the bootstrap the main page and here we're going to include all the CDN links into our project. The first CDN link is about the CSS, and the second one will be about JavaScript. Okay, so copy that URL and open index.html, which is the main, or you can say the primary HTML page which you can find our in our React project. So I have pasted this. The CDN links into my index.html and now we're going to open this form section here this is a basic form which you can find and I'm gonna copy this layout and paste it over into my form.js okay open form.js and here again I'm going to use the fragment and yeah you and you can see we got some error so you need to put the closing tag for input now here you can see a simple form is on our react project email address and the password here we have two text area and one button and here you can see it is too much responsive as well you can see while changing the size of your browser so this is all about how you can add the bootstrap into your web app and in the next part we're going to style up our bootstrap template into our required Doodle app. Till then keep learning, keep exploring and stay motivated. Hello friends, welcome back. Here in this lesson we're gonna style our Doodle app. Okay, so by the way what exactly the bootstrap is? Bootstrap is the most popular CSS framework which is used for developing the responsive and the mobile first websites. 
So here we're going to do some changes, some modifications into our app and make it look like a to do app thing. Okay. So first of all, we just need only one text area. So I'm going to remove all other things. So now here you can see we have, okay, I'm going to also remove this hello world thing as well, which is not required right now. So here we have one title, which is to do app and one text area and one button for submitting our to do item here i'm going to use this container my three a container i'm going to create m y simply means margin m means margin and y means at which direction you want to put okay and then we're going to use the justify content for the alignment of our container and we have used the center alignment here and now i'm going to create another div and here i'm going to use the col which means column then md means medium okay for the grid system so here we have created a container and put our form there okay now here you can see we have button which is primary here you can do some more thing some more options are also available you can look into the boost for website and we'll get plenty of options up there now here we're going to you know add some borders and then here we're going to also add some round corners into our border let me choose the 50 pixel we'll go fine then here i'm going to use the padding to 30 px now let us check it out how it looks like it looks cool now we need to change the color of our background okay why it looks so much you know simple so we're going to add some background up there and uh, let me increase the size of button as well the width of the button now it looks good and also make it somehow round okay just add the style and remove the border and your button will, will be more look like a round button okay and uh, here we're going to add some placeholder as well like write something like try typing do exercise which is very much required okay so now we have header to do app one text area with some placeholder and some bit button with round shaped. Let me do some changes into header thing as well. But before it, we're going to add the background image. So simply use the URL and the directory of your image. So this is the background image which I have chosen for. And uh, here I'm going to change the color of the background of our border okay the content inside the border will be into white color and at the outer area it would be the background color let me change the border color as well to the white now it's good okay we got some problem with the header so open you the CSS file, the index.css, and here you, you need to add the edge fan and choose the color to black. And uh, let me check it out. Yeah, it's working fine. Let me increase the size and change the font style as well. So here I'm going to use sans, sans serif, the most commonly used font style. And here I'm going to choose 48 px for my font size now our app look you know great let me show you one, one one more thing that how i have created the background image this is the paint i have divided into two parts and here i have added one color of different strength this is a dark blue color and the light blue color and change the size as well and now i'm going to increase the size to the back the original one and here you can see in this way you can create the gradient background of your choice color okay blue is my favorite color so i've used the blue color you can choose whatever color you want 
or any background image of your choice so this is all about how you can create the you know the template of the to do app in the next lesson we're going to learn how we can add some functionalities into our to do app till then keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated hello friends and welcome back here in this lesson you will learn about react state and react event so what exactly the react state is the state is built in react object that is used to contain data about the component and a component state can be changed over time whenever it changes and the component then re-renders it so this is how this react single page application works so here we're going to create a input data as a state for our text area box okay so we got some error and the error is simply just because we are using class here you just need to change the class to class name okay because the class is already the reservoir into your react that's why we are getting that kind of problem so now let me refresh this page and here you can see all the errors went away okay now we're going to create the on change event for our react application so what basically the on change event is uh, it is like it, it will going to actually detect when the value of an input element changes so here you can see we have a text area and here whatever which we're going to pass into our text area so it is a kind of event and here we're actually collecting those characters those text from the text area okay and changing into our input data the state of our to do app so here by default i am giving an empty value for our input data okay and now here i'm going to define a function so this function will just going to output the content whatever content which we are passing on our text area and uh, I'm going to change the input data to the the whatever text are which are there on in, to my input box okay and at last I'm going to, going to just simply write down console.log and uh, this dot state dot input data now let's see how it works so here you can see just I have written hello it detected the content at each phase and this is how this the state changes and the company re-renders hope you understand in the next lesson we're going to learn how to exactly add the content into our to-do list that's all keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated hello friends and welcome back to yet another lesson and here we're going to create a new function which handles event caused by the submitting a form for this i'm going to use on submit event handler on submit event is an event handler attached to the form submission event inside it we're going to mention our new function so let us check it out what exactly our to-do item will look like before adding to our actual to-do list for this i'm going to use console.log for the output so just write this dot state dot input data okay and now refresh the page So here let me write something so here you can see that while pressing up the submit button what exactly happening is it is actually re-rendering our react page and we will not able to have the console.log output into our console so here I'm gonna use the alert option okay so with alert a pop-up message would be there and it includes our to-do item list so here instead of console.log I'm going to remove it write alert and you need to put it this into the backticks and at the beginning you need to put the dollar sign okay now let us check it out what our to-do item will look like 
let's write hello add and here you can see a pop-up message is there and it says hello so in this way we got our to-do item and the next step is to add the to-do item into our to-do list so for it we need to create a to-do item list so the to-do item list will going to contain whatever we're going to pass into our input box and that to-do item will be go inside our to-do list and uh, we're going to also create a list where we're going to mention all the to-do items so let us create a new JS file inside the component folder list.js and here we need to create a list so simply write down to do item equal to square braces in this way we have created a list and here input data and the to do item are the control component so basically the control component in react are those in which the form data is handled by the component state so these both are the control components of our application in the next lesson we're going to create the format the template for our list.js so till then keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated all well, friends and welcome back and here we're going to create the template for our list.js and for it we're going to use again bootstrap before it we're going to import to do list into our main form.js okay for it you just need to simply write down import to do list from then you need to mention your file name and here after a form you need to simply write down to do list and uh, it will call that particular component basically the to do list is a component and we are nesting this component into our form.js so this is our list.js and here the bootstrap website we have the option list group and here I'm gonna use the basic list group option so remove this part use the fragment again and put this and instead of class you need to use class name okay and uh, let us check it out the how our to do app look like so we have uh, items here into our application so let me add some margins so simply I'm going to use my-3 and here we, you can see that there is a space between a button and our list and uh, now we're going to pass the actual list the to-do list which we have created so here you need to pass it as a prop okay so this is to do item and we have one item which is do exercise so we're going to pass this list and see that do exercise comes into our app or not so here i'm going to write simply items equal to inside curly braces this dot state dot to do items we're going to actually passing this list as a prop and now we're going to use it inside list.js so first of all i'm going to remove all that thing and here let me remove each of these before writing the actual thing because you need to access the list and to access the list we actually need to use the map okay and first of all i'm also going to convert it into the class component so here this i'm going to copy each line one by one so ui class equal to list group and here you need to mention the name of your list this dot props dot item now which is your actual uh, list name and here use the map function and I'm going to put the value and the index by default you can put your value as an index but if you're sure 
that whatever content you want to write down into your list will be uh, unique then you need to you do not need to use the index but if you're not sure that whatever items you're going to add into your list is common or uncommon and use this index function and here you can see the new variant of our fragment earlier we just used the two angular braces now here as we need to pass the key we are actually writing down react.fragment and the key with the index and here li class is equal to a list group items and the value so here we can see we are able to access our to do item list now again i'm going to put some space do exercise okay and now let me add one more item into our list so let's write down create react app project and here you can see that particular item which we have added into our list is coming into our to do app so in the next lesson we're going to create a function which actually add the to do items into our to do list okay that's all for this lesson keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated hello friends and welcome back and here in this lesson we're going to add our to do items into our to do list till now we have created the template for our to do app and also i have shown you that how you can handle the input data and now we're going to focus on adding those items into our to do list so this is the function which we have created through this we have generated a pop-up message which contains the to-do item and now we're going to add this conditional statement which will going to check that the input data is empty or not and then it will going to proceed further so in that case you just need to write this dot state dot input data not equal to empty now here i'm going to use the let variable you can also use the const variable as well but with the help of let you will be able to reassign a new value to any variable but in case of const you cannot reassign a new value at all so here i'm using the let keyword rather than using the const keyword and now here i have used the separate operator which simply means three dots and you need to give provide the name of your list and the new item so it will going to append it into our list okay now here i'm going to use set state and with the help of set state we can update the state of any component and then it will instruct re react to re-render the component and its children with the updated state so this set state will give a response to any kind of event handlers server responses or any kind of prop change then it will going to proceed its process so here we have given a new value to our do item and giving the input data empty okay let us check now we are able to add the to do item into our to do list or not so there's, there is a problem which we got and to solve that problem we i'm going to use the span tag okay with the help of span tag we will be able to achieve our goal so simply add span tag and here you need to pass this function on click and you need to provide the name of your the responding function which is handle submit okay and uh, let us check it out that it is still working or still giving a problem so again we are not able to add the to do item into our to do list let me do one more thing we i'm going to change the button type to the button okay and now let us check test yeah now here you can see that we are able to add the to do items into our to do app list so in this way we have achieved the goal of adding to do items into our to do list so that's all here i have shown you that how you can create the add function 
through which you will able to add items into your to-do list hello friends and welcome back here in this lesson i'm going to add a new feature into our to-do app which is delete so that we will be able to delete any to-do item from our to-do list here i'm going to use the bootstrap button to be specific the danger one which has a color red color so i'm going to put this code snippet just after the li tag so that we could have the button for each to do item so here we can see we have the danger button just after every to do item now here i'm going to change the size of our button so we need to do some kind of changes into the class of the button adding a space between let me do this afterward here just write down btn dash sm which simply means that you want a small button and here you have added the space between the to do item and the button if you want to increase some more spaces you can increase the magnitude from one to three or four okay and here let me add the width for the button okay let me add the margin for x-axis as well i'm going to set it as auto so here we have the small buttons for our to do items now we're going to add the functionalities into our this buttons but before it we need to change the title from the danger to remove i think remove would be better let's write down remove and yeah but i think we can do one more thing instead of putting the button on the in the at the bottom of the list it's better to add beside the to do item i think this looks much cool than the previous one isn't it instead of remove i think we should add this cross symbol now it looks perfect okay so now i'm going to create a function for this button and then we're going to pass that particular function or you can say method as a prop to the child component so here i have created the delete item function instead of event as we need to delete that particular to do item we have to access the the index for that particular to do item and th then only we will be able to delete that particular to do item from our to do list now let me pass this function to the child component which is list.js and here if we're going to press that particular remove button it will going to output the button clicked and here i have to mention that particular function for it you need to do the binding of that function so here I have okay, we got some error okay not a problem so this dot props dot delete item this is the function which I have created into the parent component and I am with the help of you know with the help of props I will be able to use that particular method into our child component so I don't think so that any other changes are required here now let us open our react app and with, let me click this cross button and here you can see we got the message button clicked so as many time I have clicked the button that particular number was there so in this way I have created a simple a remove button and which is also working fine 
in the next lesson we're going to add the functionality of, for the deletion of that particular to do item from the list so that's all till then keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated hello friends and welcome back so now we have created the delete button and it is now working fine as well so now here in this lesson we're going to add the functionality of deletion into our delete button so this is the method which we are going to use delete items and here first of all we need to access the list and here we need the index of the to do item which we want to be deleted so first of all i'm going to create a new variable original and it will contain the the list which is our to do item and here another variable which i'm going to create it it is selected and here i'm going to use the filter method filter method and react is pretty much what it says it is a process of looping through an array and including or excluding elements inside that array based on a condition which you are going to provide so here we're going to ignore that particular selected index which whichever we want to delete so here we are using the filter method so here i'm also going to pass the index so that you can see the index of each to do items okay and here i'm also going to pass this index okay now let us open the react app and here we can see we have the index 0 do exercise then 1 create react project so this is the index and through which we're going to delete that particular to do item from our to do list so let me remove this index that is not required and uh, yeah so here you can see that we we are passing the index from here and then this method which is up there on our parent component then if we're going to run that particular function and delete that particular to do item and here one more thing which we need to do is to use the set state function with the help of set state function we could you know change the value of the variables okay so simply write down this dot set state and here just write original and select it the filtered array and here we need to one, do one more thing is to add this add the spread symbol okay so you need to put the you know the square braces and then three dots at the beginning so in this way we are actually accessing the list our to-do list now let us open our to-do app and here let me write something here like test now let me press this cross button and it is working fine so, so in this way i have created a, a simple to-do app where you can add the to-do items and delete whenever that particular to-do item is completed to-do item is very much required to manage your time more efficiently so try to convert your big projects into smaller tasks and add into your to-do item and then you will be able to plan your day accordingly if you don't have a to-do items to-do list then you will do any random thing but if you have the to-do item you know what are the things important what are the priorities then it will be a little bit easy for you to complete the big projects big task within a day or within a whatever deadline you have created so that's why you should follow the to-do list and manage your work and time hi there and welcome back friend here in this lesson we're going to look after docker file which is a kind of template through which we will be able to create our docker image okay so here this is my react app which i have created the to-do app from here you can add whatever task you want to add and once your task is completed you can simply delete that particular task from your to-do app so now here as i'm using visual studio code 
I would also suggest you to install this Docker extension. And adding this extension will going to save a lot of time. In short, it will improve your productivity as a developer. Now I'm going to run my Docker engine, which is very much required to initiate further Docker task. Okay, and for it, this is my Docker desktop. And here you can see at the left corner at the bottom, it is still in the you know pending state, which is not started yet. Okay, it will take a little bit of time, but once it is started, you can see the color of that particular tab is changed to green. Okay. Meanwhile, Kubernetes is also going to be started. And here you can see there is no container running right now. Now let me show you some more things about you know this extension. Here you can access the container, the images, then you can also access some volumes and various other options are available here. So here instead of opening each time your docker desktop all the options are available here in this ide okay so docker file is basically a text document that contains all kind of commands which is required in order to assemble our image okay and here i'm going to use some set of syntax like from add cmd these are some syntax related to docker file okay i'm going to describe each and everything here don't worry so please note down that docker file doesn't contain any kind of extension so keep this point in your mind okay and the, the very first instruction which you need to write down here is the from instruction so here we're going to use the base image which is node.js in order to run our react application so docker container is a runtime instance of the docker image so this base image that node.js will be pulled down and then whatever we're going to write after it will going to be run okay it's just like a you know shell script if you're familiar with linux you know what the purpose of using shell script or in windows there is batch script which contains some sets of instructions okay in the same way we have docker file in order to build docker image so here you can see the package which is in. you need to copy this because it is very much required as it contains all the packages which are required in order to run the react application and at last you need to just install all of that packages and at last you need to copy down your source code and just like you know in command prompt we just write npm start you need to give the instruction to initiate your react app into docker container so these are a set of instructions which are required every time in order to run docker container and docker container contains your react app so that you can run your application anywhere in any kind of environment whether it is a window platform or linux platform mac os platform or having different versions of whatever libraries and packages which i'm using here now in order to build the docker image you need to use the particular command docker build hyphen d which is you know hyphen d stands for tag to give the name of for your docker image okay so here i have given the name to do app and colon latest you can give any version okay and at last the single dot means that the current directory contains my docker file this is a location where your docker file resides okay it will take a time as you can see that it is in you know building our docker image so once you know the base image is, is pulled down it will going to run all these instructions now let me do some fast forward so that it won't take too much time okay, okay. so as you can see i have increased the video speed to 4x okay so here we can see that it is still building up our dark image
And one more thing which I have, I have forgot to tell you about dot docker ignore file which is very much required in order to skip some of the files at the time of building docker image okay so here you can see we have successfully built our docker image this this is a to do app our docker image in the next lesson i want to show you that how you can run a docker container from it so hope you understand that how you can build docker image your custom docker image using docker file if you have any kind of doubt you can ask me in the q a section till then keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated hi there and welcome back friend in the previous lesson i have shown you that how you can build docker image and now here in this lesson we're going to run that particular docker image and create the docker container from it okay so in order to run the docker container you can simply use this command docker run and hyphen hyphen name which is the attribute here to give the name of your docker container if you're going to forget this particular attribute it will going to create some interesting name like boring wozniak intelligent einstein whatever a very funny combination of adjective and the scientist name okay and then you need to use the hyphen d hyphen d is particularly used in order to run your container into the background and print the container id as you can see up on my screen okay and you need to give the name of the docker image at the last of the command so here you can see into my docker desktop our docker container is up and running now let us check that our react app is accessible or not and here you can see it is also running fine so here you can see that i have first created the react app then created the docker file then created the docker image from the docker file and now we are running our docker container from that custom docker file and now if i'm going to publish this docker image into docker hub now anyone my friend sitting in different parts of world can access my react app without installing react or it doesn't matter in which platform they are using it doesn't matter what kind of versions of the packages they have installed into their system nothing this docker saves a lot of time this docker is docker you know it's awesome so here you can see that i have successfully run my docker container from our docker image in the next part we're going to push our docker image up into the cloud the docker hub till then keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated my friend hi there and welcome back here in this lesson you're going to learn how to publish your docker image the docker hub in the previous lesson you have learned that how you can containerize your react app and then i'm here i'm just going to push my docker image up there to the docker hub docker hub which is the world's largest container image repository where you can find 1 million container images yeah you heard right 1 million container images so now we're going to push our docker image up there into docker hub and it will be and 1 million docker containers so this is how it looks like this is the dashboard of my docker hub you can see here now here just click on create repository option and now just provide the end name for your docker image and here you will get an option visibility there's two options available one is public another one is private it's it is just like a github like thing you can see if you if you are already familiar with github then it would be tough for you so the public means that whatever you push it will be visible to everyone and anyone can access your docker image create docker container from it and run your react app but if you choose to private then you and your teammate can access that docker image so this is how it looks like now we have completed our first step now the second step is to push our local docker image to docker hub and here you need to tag your local docker image to tag your local docker image you need to use docker tag command so simply just write docker tag and your local docker image name and your remote docker hub repository name okay once you have done this then we're going to push our docker image to docker hub so docker hub is very very important thing you know through this you can also access some free public repo, repo and you can use them to, into your project and build something awesome 
so now I'm just going to copy this name my remote docker hub repository name you can say now let me run this command docker push psrv slash to do app this psrv is the username for my docker hub okay so just run this command to push to docker image to docker hub here we got an error and i think i forget to log in into my docker hub account through this terminal let me do this just simply write down docker space login and it will ask for your username which is psrv3 which i have told you earlier and now at last you need to enter the password and it is just like you know linux ecosystem like if you're going to write down your password it will be in hidden okay yeah we have successfully logged in into our Docker Hub account through this terminal. So now we're going to push our Docker image up there to Docker Hub. And once it is done, it will give a message that it is successfully pushed your Docker image to Docker Hub. It won't take too much time, just wait. Here you can see there are multiple layers are there. Okay. Now let me refresh this web page and here in the tag option here, here you can see that we have successfully published our docker image just right now. So this is the tag id you can see. Now anyone can use this docker image as I have set to public. Okay. Now let me use my own docker image. For it you need to simply pull that docker image from the docker hub and run that pulled docker image into docker container and access your react app now let me use this command docker pull psrv3 slash to do app and whatever version it is so we have successfully pulled the image and now i'm just going to write docker one so it has started the process now let me check whether we can access our react app or not so first of all i'm going to open docker desktop and here okay we need to give the port we have forwarded to do port mapping it is very much required in order to access your web application now let me stop this container and rerun that particular command so let's press ctrl c let me stop this first okay just right now docker run and then hyphen p which is used for you know providing the ports okay just write python p and you need to provide two things the port through which you can access your react app and the docker container port the host port okay so here i'm just going to give the 3000 to both of them now let us see it is working fine or not now let me again open this docker desktop here you can see we have a new docker container running so we can easily access our react app through that image which we have published to docker hub after it we have pulled down to our local system and now i'm running it so this is the beauty of docker you can make your code more portable and run your code anywhere around the world so hope you have understand that how you can publish your docker image to docker hub in the next lesson you're going to learn more about it till then keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated before understanding kubernetes you must know about container technology you have developed an application now it's time to run it on production but you caught with some warnings and errors you search for solution into developer preference like stack overflow or even ask to your 
he made but at the end you still don't have a solution according to the survey it is found that about 70 percent of issue are related to what problems we have right now to rescue us from such a problem docker comes into the picture docker is one of the popular container technology with docker you pack your application with essential libraries and dependencies into a container and makes your deployment process easy to run anywhere anywhere i mean in production iron as well this time when developer team gives the code to the ops team to deploy the application and it works voila with docker you save your precious time your resources and lots of money so this is all about docker like container technology suppose your application becomes too much popular and to solve that problem you added more and more containers and now to manage a containers will be impossible for you there kubernetes comes into the picture and helps you out managing container workload and the services hi there and welcome back friend here in this lesson you will learn how to set up kubernetes cluster locally using minikube with the help of minikube we can easily create vm on our local machine and deploy a simple cluster containing a single node now to create a cluster you need to use minikube start command and also you need to mention the driver which you want to use here as i'm going to use the hyper-v driver so i've mentioned it the default one is VirtualBox. Instead of these two, you can also use HyperKit, KVM, Docker, and many other, you know, drivers are available with Minikube. Minikube is a cross-platform. It means that you can use this Minikube toolkit not only in, on Windows, but also on Linux, as well as on Mac OS. And here, as you can see, there is no need to run the docker engine once you have set up the kubernetes cluster with the help of minikube you can easily run the docker commands inside it as docker is already installed in it okay so once it will be ready i will also going to show you how to access this you know minikube vm on windows you can even crack the status of the minikube using Hyper-V manager, okay. As you can see, it is taking too much time. Let me open the hypervisor manager, and here you can see that the status is in running state. And from here, you will get lots of options that you can connect with this VM, or you can restart that VM, and so on things. Now here you can in see in the command line that our cluster is ready, up and running. Now let me see the status. Just write down minikube status and it will give the snapshot of our Kubernetes cluster. And here we can see our host is running, our, everything is configured. Okay. Now I'm going to show you that how you can do SSH into this mini QVM. either you can use this ui mode or you can do it with terminal and i love terminal so let me show you how you can access a mini QVM with the help of you know terminal so just simply write down mini cube ip okay from the, with the help of this command you will get the ip of the mini cube and as the the user of this mini cube is darker so simply write down SSH Docker your username at the rate whatever IP it is. Okay. Oh, yeah. Here you need to write down yes, and it will ask for the password. So the password for the default Minikube cluster is PC user. Okay. Once you are logging, you can even change the password as well. Now let me show you that some commands on my Minikube view like who am I, then PWD the current directory of where I am right now and here let me show you that docker is installed or not just write down docker hash hash version and here you can see it displays the version of our docker and these are the commands which you can run on this VM machine 
I hope you understand that how you can set up the Kubernetes cluster with the help of Minikube. See you in the next class. Hi there and welcome back. Here in this lesson you will learn about Kubernetes pod. In the previous lesson you have learned that how you can set up the simple Kubernetes cluster locally with the help of Minikube. So here the pod is basically the smallest and the most important unit of computing that you can create and manage in Kubernetes. It is basically a group of one or more containers which share storage and network resources and whatever the things which is required in order to run your container. So you cannot run a container directly inside a cluster. You will require this pod to run them. Now here we're going to define the YAML file in order to create the pod. And the basic template of any definition YAML file, you need to mention four things. The very first thing is API version, then kind, then metadata, and at last specification, which in short you can write SPEC spec. Okay, so let's write API version here and uh, mention the version, which is V1 here. Then we're going to write the kind. Kind is like you need to mention which kind of Kubernetes object which you are using here. And here in our case, we are using pod. Other Kubernetes objects are you can say replica, services, deployment, and various other things, volumes as well, which I'm going to discuss later on. And inside the metadata, you need to provide the name of your pod. Okay. My first pod. And here you can also attach some labels and it is in the form of you know dictionary like you have some key and then some values in it it is very hel very helpful as you can create some sort of groups okay and then you can select those groups to do some basic functionalities okay like here in our case I have mentioned app dot node okay it comes into the node section so other services other objects which I'm going to create and if I'm going to mention the same labels we can easily do the bulk operation with the help of these labels labels are very useful now in the spec which is a specification you need to mention the container which you want to run inside your Kubernetes pod you can either mention one or more so here for example I'm, going, I'm just going to use only one container here this is the docker desktop which you can see here on my screen now I'm going to copy the name of my docker image which I'm going to use here and this is the you know the remote repository option through which you can easily access the repository which is up there up there means simply means that it is published on docker hub okay let me show you this is a docker image which I'm talking all about and this image which I'm going to use inside my Kubernetes pod. Okay. So let me copy the name of this Docker image. Here the PSRV3 is the username for my Docker hub. And this to do app is the name of my Docker image. So you need to use both of them. So just I've copied it and I'm just going to paste it over here. Okay. So we have written down the basic definition YAML file to create the Kubernetes pod. Now we just need to run this YAML file and create the Kubernetes pod, our very first pod, you can say. So just simply write down kubectl and then create hyphen f and the name of your definition YAML file. And here you can see display the message as your pod is created okay and here you can see the current status of my pod using kubectl get pod option and uh, it will take time because as the image is not present locally so it will look for you know up in the docker hub then pull that particular image and then run that container into my kubernetes pod okay so let me revisit some more concepts of pod so that you can understand more deeply. 
so think it of a kubernetes cluster as a hotel and where the rooms are the parts and inside a kubernetes cluster hotel there are multiple parts are there okay so this simply means inside a cluster you can have multiple parts and inside the part inside the room basically it has the bed it has some chairs some tables the mirrors and other options other things so these all are things are basically the container okay and now you can know that each room in the hotel have some unique space and have some unique address so the room number is basically the specific location specific storage you can say so i hope you have understand i have given an analogy so that you can have this picture this visual picture and understand that how this part looks like inside the kubernetes cluster still it is taking too much time because the size of my docker image is much higher that's why it is taking so much time no worries once it will pull that particular image our container will going to run up and here you can see we got the status running here it simply means that our container is now running inside of a pod now one more thing which i'm going to add here is to like i've added this attribute dash dash watch so there's no need to uh, you know run this command again and again it will going to give the current status of whatever kubernetes object you are looking for so this is how we have successfully run the kubernetes pod inside our kubernetes cluster in the next lesson we're going to learn how to make our app highly available self-healing okay with the help of replica till then keep learning keep exploring and see you in the next class hi there and welcome back here in this lesson you are going to learn about replication in kubernetes so replication simply means the process of creating something it is like copying something you can say so here in the case of kubernetes we are basically going to create the replica of our pod so this is very helpful because it makes your application more reliable and you can easily do load balancing and easily scalable as well now think of the situation when one of your pod get failed or some crash happened then it will going to create another pod okay so like if you specified that that amount of replica should be running at all the time and if anything happened then it will going to maintain that particular number and your application will be served all of the time okay so here we are going to use the replication controller which is one of the method or you can say one of the kubernetes object through which you can achieve this application in kubernetes other than it you will also have replication set which i'm going to discuss in the later part till then we're going to focus on replication controller so i've copied that template and now i'm just going to do some changes into this replication controller define yaml file okay so basically you still have the api version then the kind is not changed to replication controller and here you need to add template into spec category because as you're going to replicate the pod you need to you know give the template of the pod inside the pod you are going to have and you know you give the information about your container as well so simply write down template and then give the details of your pod okay and in this way i have created a simple yaml file yaml definition file for application controller so let me rearrange it and at last you need to mention the number okay the number of replicas you want so here in our case i'm just going to put a number three okay three is my lucky number and now once i'm going to run this particular um, yaml file it will going to create the replication controller this is the old way you can say now most of the people prefer replica set okay but still it is good best so here i have going to you know create this replication controller and now you can see that 
we have pod one pod is running i did that so that i want to show you the importance of labels which i have talked earlier so now you can see the we have created the pod one pod separately and then we run the this rc define yaml file separately and you can, here you can see that only two new pod is created okay and that the first pod is automatically comes into this application controller and this is the importance of labels which i was talking all about so whatever Kubernetes objects you are going to create and uh, with the help of that label you can perform the bulk operations okay now let me show you the purpose of you know, using the application controller so here i'm going to delete one of my pod okay and uh, after deleting the pod it will going to maintain the number which i provided into yaml which is three so it will going to create a new pod in that place let me show you so one pod is deleted and now you here you can see another pod is created so this is why this application is very much important companies needs a reliable app so that they can give 24 into 7 services to their customer that's why there is widespread of kubernetes and it is becoming popular day by day and uh, this simply means that replication is very important factor and in the later part we're also going to see that how you can scale up your part with the help of the replica and the deployment till then keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated see you in the next class hi there welcome back so you know what is the replication in kubernetes and why do we need them and how to achieve them using the application controller here in this lesson you're going to learn that how you can use replica set okay so if you're going to compare replication controller and replica set in terms of defining them into yaml there is a very very you know negligible change which you can see here so here i'm just going to add the selector which is the only thing which you need to add into your definition yaml file and your replica set yaml files are up and ready you so what exactly is the difference between them and the thing is both are same doing the same thing but the replication controller is an old approach whereas the replica set is the modern approach and you can easily align the replica set with deployment which is you know the main kubernetes object and one more thing which i want to mention here that the replica set supports set based selector whereas the replication controller uses equality based so in the name you can say equality which means the symbols which you can see there is like equal to not equal to like this thing but in the case of set based requirement which is in replica set here you can see in not in exist things like that okay so here i'm going to create the replication set 
Okay, we got some arrow. Let me see where it is. Hey, we got the problem up there. So let me rerun this up. And yep. So we have successfully created replica set. Now, now let me see all of my objects. And here you can see that we have one pod and then two new pods is created in the same way that happened while doing with the replication controller okay and uh, let me do one more thing let me delete one of the pod and also show you the same functionality which we achieve using replication controller the same thing we, we can also achieve by replica set as i said that both are same only few changes are there like one in you know defining them adding some selector labels and uh, you can easily align this replica set with deployment so you can choose any of them okay in terms if you want to add the functionality or application because it is very much required to make your application more reliable scalable and easily do load balancing and then go for it any method but if you want something like you know do some changes into your application doing something like you know roll back like things so it can be easily done by replica set because it you can easily align it with deployment so i will suggest to use replica set rather than replication controller so that's all hope you understand the difference between replica set and replication controller and how to achieve them and why do we need them Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, and stay motivated. See you in the next class. Hi there, and welcome back. Here in this lesson, you are going to learn about Kubernetes deployment. With the help of deployment, you can efficiently scale the number of replica pod, enable the rollout of updated code in a controlled manner, or roll back to earlier deployment version if necessary and this is the extension of replica set you can say in short so here you can see in the definition of a file of deployment there is not such changes required just you need to change the kind from replica set to deployment and that's it your deployment definition yaml is now ready now just run this yaml file to create the deployment now here one thing which I want to mention here that there are basically four types of deployment which are popular. The number one is recurrent deployment, then rolling update deployment, then blue green deployment, at last canary deployment. Here we are going to use the recreate deployment where it will going to terminate all the running, you know, all the running parts and recreate them. Here you need a downtime period so that you can shut down your whatever things is happening and starts the new update okay other one is rolling update deployment where you need to uh, simply migrate from one version to another version with the help of introducing new replica set and terminating the old replica set and with time once all your old version is, bots are terminated systematically the new version is launched eventually so this is another important you know strategies of deployment and other one which is nowadays are popular which is blue green deployment which i will suggest the one of the best method one of the best strategies you can say here you're going to introduce both the deployment the old version the new version and once you think you get some confidence that the new version will going to handle all the traffic all the things what the previous version was doing then just simply remove that okay so these are some of the deployment strategies which I have discussed here and here you can see the, the deployment objects created and it holds the RS here you can see in the in this namespace. So it's, it is just about it is just extension or replica set. Okay. So now in case we're going to delete one of the pod, it will going to again create a new pod with the name RS as well 
so this is all about kubernetes deployment in the next lesson we're going to learn more about kubernetes deployment like we're going to you know update something then roll back to earlier version then we're going to scale up scale down according to demand of the application so we're going to learn more about kubernetes deployment in upcoming lesson till then keep learning keep moving ahead and stay motivated see you in the next class Hi there and welcome back. Here in this lesson you are going to learn how to do scaling in Kubernetes. So here in this lesson you are going to learn a new kubectl command which is kubectl scale in order to scale up and scale down your application. Now what exactly happens when you are going to scale up in a Kubernetes? It will increase the number of parts and if you are going to scale down it will decrease the number of parts. So why there is need of scaling up and scaling down? The only two reasons which I think which will going to answer this question is first one cost optimization. Now you have thousand parts of running and there is no such demand. Then why you are wasting your resources and your money? In that case you need to adjust the number of parts according to demand. Okay? You need to think that what is the demand and what is the supply you need to give and now just think you have 10 parts running and there is huge demand in that case there will be so much load to that 10 parts that they will going to hang or either they will going to you know crash so in order to solve this problem we have the concept of scaling in kubernetes and here we're going to use the concept of scaling in our case so here as you can see on my screen i have scale up to five replicas so it increased the number of my part from three to five in order to manage the huge demand now in case the demand is too low so I'm just going to set it to one part running so I just decrease the number of parts from five to one and this way you have learned that how you can scale up your application how you can scale down your application so scaling is very much important there are basically two types of scaling one is vertical scaling and other one is horizontal scaling in vertical scaling you're going to increase the capacity of your sources okay for example by using a larger virtual machine in size and other hand the horizontal scaling where you need to create or you can say you will going to add new instances of your resource such as database replica your bar replica in our case these are the example of horizontal scaling so here I have shown you that how you can scale if you have any kind of doubt you can ask me in the Q&A section till then keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated hi there and welcome back here in this lesson we're going to learn how you can update and roll back in kubernetes with the help of kubectl so basically we have running this react app the Tulu app in our docker container and now that docker container is running inside our kubernetes pod now here our task is to change the docker image from our react app to any other docker image for here i'm just going to use nginx docker image okay and uh, to change uh, this, this change is actually the update to update the docker image you need to use this kubectl set image command and here you need to provide the deployment name which is deployment slash my first part deploy and now you need to provide the name of the new image which is nginx for our case and yeah my first part deploy asterisk i'll leave it this okay we got an error unable to find container name my first part okay this is the name of our pod basically we need to provide the name of the container which is my first deploy only so just remove this deploy and read on this command now here you can see the you got a message which says that 
the image is now updated now let me open this the status of our current part and here you can see that it's creating a new container as there is three number specified for our you know for our part that's why it's creating the the last one part now let me access our part and check that the update which we have did here is reflected or not okay and for it to access your you know your application you need to use the kubernetes services okay and now here you can see that another one is not terminating and new one is creating this is how deployment work okay so here you can see the react app which we have run earlier is now running react okay now to access the new image we need to create a new kubectl service and for nginx i'm going to use the port 80 okay which is through which we will be able to access the docker nginx image so just simply write kubectl expose deploy then the deployment name and uh, and provide the name of your service which is new svc and then port 280 okay the target port 80 and the type of your service node port okay now let us run this command our new service is created now just write mini cube space service and then the name of your newly created service which is new service okay so here you can see that we are actually able to access the newly created container which is nginx this simply means that we have successfully updated to the new docker image okay now i'm just if you want to just roll back to the older version you need to use the rollback command okay which i'm going to show you how you can roll back before it this is the history which you can see here as i have didn't mention any message that's why you can see there is none so we have the two versions of our deployment the one with react app the other one is with nginx docker image okay now we're going to you know undo or you can say roll back to the earlier version which simply means that there will be you know two three will be there one is now omitted and the three one the third one is basically our nginx thing so here you can see that the new container is now now creating and the previous container are now deleting now if you're going to refresh this page now you won't be able to access as it is no longer part of our docker container just write kubectl get svc and here i've already created the service for my you know for my react app so here i'm just going to write mini cube space service the space my svc and it will going to open my react app so here you can see that how it works okay nginx app is now running this react app is now running inside my docker container inside of our kubernetes part which simply means which we have successfully rolled back to the original version of the docker container so this is how you can do update and roll back in kubernetes if you have any kind of doubt you can ask me in the q a section till then keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated